morning everybody from around the world the birds came there to greet you it's a nice kind of a sky I was waiting there about 10 minutes to see if something would break in the sky and now we've got this nice little bit of gold for you over the Golden Dome it's very interesting to be reading the text we have today in the first reading here at Mount Zion it's specifically mentioned in this book of Revelation chapter 14 I John looked and there was the lamb standing on Mount Zion So historically, the first Mount Zion has to be here, the Temple Mount, where God resided. And then, because of the destruction of the Temple, and more importantly, because of the experiences enjoyed at the upper room of the risen Lord, entering the promised land forever of resurrected humanity over there in the center of the screen behind that big tree and the tower right there is the upper room remembrance that we have today a building from the crusader times and there we remember the, the christian memory of the risen christ appearing to the disciples and they saw <clears throat> the lord humanity the human flesh enter to glory never again to be destroyed no enemies could reach it an amazing moment for of human history the breaking of a new day and we're ever filled with gratitude since that moment it's the biggest word we can speak, just like the first creation, gratitude. And the greatest word we can speak in the new creation. And it wasn't just the first appearance there, it was also the Last Supper. And the priesthood and the Eucharist that would make that victory of that amazing self-offering of the Word made flesh. forever palpable and livable and we could be grafted into it and participate in it by anticipation already here in this life and taste and live a little bit of the resurrection and it was also Pentecost the room of Pentecost so no wonder they called it Mount Zion the outpouring of the Holy Spirit the the, the spirit that hovered over the waters for the creation of the universe when <clears throat> sun and moon came into being and we're here at Mount Zion this morning we read that line again I John looked and there was the lamb standing on Mount Zion <clears throat> it's very chilly here this morning on Mount Zion And with him, 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. You know, it's very interesting how we have a culture of numbers. The number seven, we always know that when that's mentioned in the Bible, it's completion. We also know the number three is very, very important. Uh, it's a kind of a fullness and the original fullness of the Trinity. And there's a, a, a Trinitarian mark in all of creation. And the dearest part of creation to us, family, father, mother, husband, wife, spouses, fruitful children, father, mother, child. The crowning Trinitarian mark of our experience that's so dear to us such a treasure 
and therefore such a target for forces of evil to destroy it. But he cannot be destroyed, he is risen. And we participate in this resurrection and the light pouring from it to our all over creation. Some people don't understand that these numbers have great symbolic meaning and they take them too literally. 144,000 is a number that rings immediately in the ears of those disciples. It's the 12. 12,000 times 12. A fullness. 12 is also a very full number because it's the fullness of the people, of the chosen people. God's people. 12,000 times 12, 144,000. It's an immense number, uncountable. It's like I'd say a million thanks, you know. I just want to say total thanks to you. In Ireland, we have a customer saying 100,000 welcomes. I mean, could you say that in your lifetime, you know? Could you meet 100,000 people personally and welcome them? How many days would you need to do that? A hundred, a thousand times a day. <laughs> How could you do that? You need to sleep a little bit as well, you know. So this is it, you see, this is, this is the, great, the great gift of life, the great abundance, abundance of creation, stars we can't count, science still doesn't know the ends of the universe <laughs> because it stretches into the infinite one who created it. It springs forth from the infinite one. How could we calculate the number of stars or the grains of sand on the seashore and the number of children that he gives to Abraham? And all the nations will be blessed through him. So this 144,000 has fantastic symbolic value of an, a huge multitude that our little calculators can't work out, especially our little head our little hard disk. Isn't it amazing what architecture does with this tower and it allows us to read the sunrise in another way and how the gift of creation, the sunrise, illuminates the little pieces of things we build in this immense universe, our little creations. The abundance of God, it's amazing. And then the next surprising symbol in this land is, I heard the rushing of waters. You don't hear that too much here, it's a desert. Actually, we can see a piece of the desert out there, more than a piece. Just first of all, this highest hill in the Judean desert, we can see it from right here, underneath the sun there. That hill, there's hardly a blade of grass growing there, although there are Bedouin shepherds that take them out there when enough rain comes. There are edibles on that hill. I've been out there. There was actually a Byzantine church out there. It was the place where they used to bring the, the, um, the, uh, how was that the word? The scapegoat to bring out the goat loaded with the sins of humanity, of the people, of God's people on Yom Kippur. And then we have more of the desert, the same desert, just you can see it there. And if we had clear weather, we could see the desertic hills of the Mount of Moab, the mountains of Moab. Well, anyway, behind the, behind the Mount of Olives there is basically all desert, all the way down to the Dead Sea, occasionally small oasis. And then I heard what was like the sound of harpists playing their harp. They were singing, singing, harp thrown before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000. These are, this immense multitude are singing. They have the name of the, the, the how does it say this here? They are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. And this is being addressed to Christians who are persecuted to give them courage, to give them hope, 
to contemplate heaven. It's a good idea to contemplate heaven. Those who have come in the heavenly Jerusalem, and that helps us to recognize our future. It's a, a hope, it's a sign of hope. And shortly we'll be beginning the Jubilee Year of Hope. We'll be obviously hearing more about that in the course of the coming year. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The deepest longing. We have so many longings for so many things, for a cup of tea, to lay our head on our pillow and go to sleep, to get up in the morning to see friends, to get family together, to bring peace on earth. So many longings and desires. And the deepest longing of all, Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. That's our Psalm today, Psalm 24. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord? Well, these 144,000 are here on the mountain of the Lord in Mount Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem. Oh, there's an interesting little feature now. The sun is shining on Ramallah. And we don't often get to see that from here, especially when I do the tours. Yesterday I gave a tour in the rain to an Irishman from my own county. Can you imagine? And we couldn't see barely beyond the crane there. Would you see the sun shining on Ramallah? It's eight miles from here. Let's say a prayer for peace in our hearts and peace for all peoples and peoples here. And then we have the widow in the temple. What, what a story. A poor widow. Most widows were poor anyway. Putting in two small coins. And the joy in Jesus' heart. You see, she's one of the 144th of the immense multitude of people who don't get covered on the front page of the New York Times or the magazine or the poor widow that goes unnoticed. There's so many poor widows that go unnoticed. Wow, the light's on marbles now. Look at the light on the stone here. And the dark background helps us to appreciate it. And there's the sun. The, the sun disk is visible. Not just some light, but the light is so intense I'm not getting it on the screen for you. But it's here to the visible, to the eye. That's strange. I can't get the light, the, the sun disk itself, but it's really bright. Probably because of all that cloud. It's funny how some clouds make the light come brighter. <laughs> and there we have the school again, and the little children going to school like we saw on Saturday. So people, I think we leave it like that for today. Wishing you many, many blessings. See you later, alligators. It's chilly here, breezy. A neighbor of ours used to say, it's a lazy wind. It doesn't go around you, it goes up through you. <laughs>